Well, thanks for staying with us on Morning Express this Monday morning. Be reminded that you can watch us on DSTV channel 258 on Star Times channel 140. And you can also watch us on the go from every part of the world by logging on to our website on www.adbntv.com forward slash live. We're also available on your portable handheld devices. Kindly visit your Google or Apple Play Store to download the Avo TV app and you can find us on channel 121. Now, having said that, we'll be linking up to our Uyo Studios to join the president and founder of Open Forum, citizen Matthew Kofi O'Connor, to review more issues in the news and prominently discuss the state of the nation uh, with the agitation of Nigerian youths in regards to the planned nationwide protest as well. Hello, good morning to you, citizen Matthew O'Connor. Can you hear us? Very well, good to see you, uh, MKO. It's been quite a while. Trust you're doing well. I'm not alone. I have Chidi okay with me in the studio as well. Good morning to you. All right, very well then. Let's get into the discussion this morning. The current state of the nation has elicited different reactions. Let's get your thoughts on uh, where this stands. Uh, let's get your thoughts on the current state of the nation in line with the current economic hardship, the position by different civil society organizations. Open forum, what's your position as president and founder? Of this 
Now, now, Citizen Mati Okono, it's important to hear you create the background, the background for dialogue, citing the most recent dialogue you had with the eminent Nigerians in attendance. Now, in terms of this social equity beyond people in government, a debate of what you have cited as the Nigerian factor, do you think that there can be more ways to tap into the needs assessment? Because that's one of the primary reasons persons have town halls need assessments to better inform our leaders of the basic requirements of their constituents or persons within their locality. So it's less than even the people looking at the nation so desperately are ashamed that the country has not collapsed. So, if we can channel this energy and we try to raise patriotic citizens, we're talking about patriotic citizens, we're not talking about people who are loyal to your leaders because of what they are going to gain, but people who have been so often interested in building something to the people. I am set the goal of productivity advocate. I believe that if you don't have any business to be in public office, if you cannot do something to the people, but that's not the case. And patriotism has taken the back seat completely. I don't talk about patriotism, some sectors will think that you must be loyal to leadership. Please permit me to take a quote by Theodore Roosevelt. At the hand of the country, what we need to be ready at at the country, if they get, I mean, leave this precipice of proof that we are doing from ourselves. This is what the government of the world said. It does not mean to stand by the country. It does not mean to stand by the president or any other public official. Where exactly will be the degree in which he himself stands by the country? Thank you very much. 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 It so far has essentially served the country. It is unpatriotic not to oppose him. And to the exact extent that by inefficiency or otherwise, he feels it is his duty to stand by the country. The last by the In either event, it is unpatriotic not to tell the truth, whether about the president or anyone else. Yes. This was a politician. This was a leader. What he had said, as far as I can years ago, it's not very much now, but he started with the state of the country as the person who will not be in the patriotic school. No matter what he does, he will support him. Because this is how it is. Have a respect. Most leaders in Nigeria don't have social rules. They don't have to be hands. And all that they have around them are just in what they are doing, what they are doing. Well, citizen, citizen Matthew, let me be for several years now. You, I, 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 I like the contrast. Well, I, I like the contrast that you drew between the, the Nigerian factor and the Nigerian dream. The Nigerian factor being uh, riddled with a lot of uh, inadequacies, a lot of mediocrity and the likes, and the Nigerian dream uh, being the bedrock of patriotism 
in in the country however a lot of people would argue that the nigerian factor has swallowed long swallowed up the nigerian dream and people who have believed in the nigerian dream for so long have had no other option than to run and leave the country and the ones that are left in the country have become so frustrated that they do not no, they no longer believe in that nigerian dream how do we stabilize this how do we bring up the nigerian dream to a higher pedestal more than the Nigerian factor. Even from the onset, you had a political party that was just meant for a section of the country. And even when the objections were made, the independent others said, over their dead body, they were going to do one independent. So it, it took dialogue, it took coming to the ground table to sort out the questions. That federal constitution was put in place. That is the foundation of the Nigerian thing that won. We are in the nation. But to the advent of the two new people and the development of the military system, even after the war, the next administration that continues, including the Indian administration that came in 1979, instead of going back to the practice of the military system, to continue the military system. I think by name, we are just to take back the public area. And then the other is too bad to be run from a particular point, like in the case now, Abuja, or at the world before, Lagos. No! Nigeria is a privilege to have the center and to have the component built. Unfortunately, our leaders are reduced to even the fine to the kind of people that we are in. So the foundation will be that how did we even come together? It was because we were ready to cooperate as a federal state. We must go there and then go to the man on the shadow, the national assistance to our president, vice president, is an advocate for the practice of federalism. And it will be possible, it will be unbelievable, it will be unacceptable. That we can have the most formidable man in terms of his professional capacity. Yes, people have things against him, even when they have things against himself, but because anybody in power, being a position, being an organization, being a position or not, we must support everybody that is of his body. It's a very good attack on businesses, but not in government. Anybody that fails. Now, now, citizen Matthew, in, in taking the bulls by the horn, a lot of persons are also saying one year is too short a time to begin to judge the renewed hope mandate we we're looking at some projections that come the end of the year as published earlier on one of the dailies that uh, the inflation rate would also dwindle in the interim many are saying that some of the initiatives being deployed especially with regards to palliatives are not the best approach what are some of your recommendations to his excellency the president this morning in terms of the timeline and the patience of nigerians which is now seen to be growing thin So much at the point of 
This is Matthew. I, I, I like Well, you you made mention of you made mention of palliatives, you made mention of grants, you make you made mention of stipends, you know, from the federal government to the masses out there. Now, these are all short-term um, uh, plans to uh, douse the effects of the economic realities that we are currently facing as a country. In your opinion and in your capacity, how can we? Um, as a nation, proffer long-term solutions to some of these challenges bedeviling the nation so that people don't have to just collect fish, rather they will be taught how to fish. What, what modalities do you think can be put in place to curb some of these issues? <laughs> Virtually everybody knows that corruption has become a virtue and not a vice. So we need to fight corruption. And where do you start from? It starts from the center. There is too much money at the federal level that they don't know what to do with it. There is so much little funds at the local government level that the no amount of effort from the center can trickle down to local government. Yes, you may talk about the latest financial uh, or call autonomy. I don't want to go into that yet. If you ask me, I will share my thoughts on that. So what's the first things first? The energy sector drives the economy. Mr. President's statement on swearing in dates, which according to Mr. President was not even in speech, altered who we are. We were supposed to have taken off with reforms that will give hope to the people, but a single statement subsidy is gone, scattered everywhere, and then the floating of the Naira, and then subsidy removal was not because first subsidy was the problem. The problem had always been the corruption, not just in subsidy, but in the oil sector. We cannot have, I learned that you, um, Angola, that they have measures to measure to uh, data to know whatever oil they drill, and just like Saudi Arabia, they could give account for every drop of oil. But in Nigeria, NMPC has admitted. The House of Reps set up a panel and they proved the fraud there. And it runs into trillions. And so when the subsidy issue came, it was a wrong move. What is supposed to have been dealt with is the corruption in that sector. And until that is done, we have not started. The floating of the Naira is like 
I am a full grown man. I, I am a senior citizen by age, by the number of years God has given me. And you ask me to, you ask a child of five to come and fight me, come and measure up with me. I mean, that, 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 you, you just, you ask me to kill the, the child. So to have, did that float when we don't produce? It's impossible. It's absolutely impossible. I think today's in the papers, I heard that uh, petroleum products is now about 1,000 something, now right, in some stations and all of that. It, there will be no remedy until the corruption in that sector is addressed and Mr. President should not just step on toes. He is to crush toes. He is to send some persons to prison and he will recover trillions that have been looted which are traceable. Until we do that, the confidence of citizens will not be there. The reorientation, the mental reorientation that we need as a people to drive away the Nigerian factor and then into birth the Nigerian dream, we will never get it right. So now, it citizen, starts from there. My citizen, advocacy has been, and that, that was the result. Of citizens of the country in Nigeria, it is nice to hear these recommendations you have made. The fight against corruption is paramount. But now the citizens have got into an edge where a lot of them are saying, come August 1st, we will protest regardless of whatever initiatives are on ground. Now, there is some part of that demography that believes that constructive dialogue is still the way to go. How do we avert some of the losses? The CPPE has pegged the losses that would accrue should this protest commence daily from August 1st to 15th at 400 billion naira daily how do we assuage citizens to forestall this loss to the economy it's unfortunate that we have come to this point but it's not late to do something about it uh, the first question will have been uh, do you support a, a protest I have had cause to participate in a number of protests. None of them was violent. I'm not a violent person. Even when I had personal reasons to have been violent, I transmitted my energy into generating these ideas that you see. That's my kind of violence. But unfortunately, the problem with leadership is if you are gentle, if you are unassuming, nobody takes you seriously. That's what happened to me here in Akwaibum State. I went on a seven-day hunger strike to draw the then-Governor David Emmanuel's attention to my plight. Genuine cases that you investigate, if I'm the one that is wrong, jail me. He refused. I sat in front of the government house for seven days. He saw me there about five days. Papers wrote, television everywhere. He never cared, and he went away. And people said, what have you gained? I said, I gained a lot. At least we never had a governor. We, never, we had a government without governance. So, at the larger scale, what are the demands of people that are saying want to protest? For me, it is wrong to say youths. It's not a matter of youths. Parents are dying. Parents are grieving. I'm a father. I know what I'm going through with my family. So what do you do? You put ideas forward for government those in power to do something about. But because, like I've just said, leaders... You just talk, we do analysis. I'm every, every week I'm on radio and TV, like you know. People don't have it, free, free ideas, they don't take. So the, the, the protest for me, as long as it's peaceful, which it must be, and for those who are finding embers of that there's going to be crisis, like a particular appointee who has said, I want to quote the person, he said, those who want to burn down the country, burn the country down under whatever guise, will meet the strongest resistance of their lives. Not from security agencies, but from the silent majority that gave their mandate to President Bola Ahmed Tinumbu for four years in the first instance. We are waiting. That is supposed to be an appointee at the first center on his Twitter handle. It's there. I don't want to mention his name. You can Google that. Those that know that, they will know. That is an appointee who had supported the 2012 protest under President Jonathan, which as was protest. part of the protest, there was no crisis. Why? Because the government 
did not make secret arrangements to send hoodlums, to even send security agencies, like it happened with the NSAS. But for, for now, the economy is not doing well, not because people have protested, but because the corruption will never allow the economy to do well. So we cannot be counting losses of, oh, we are going to sit at home, we'll do these losses. If it would take that for our lives to be better as a people, so be it. But what's well, the way well, forward? Well, the well, way well, forward citizen, is that Mr. Okay. President knows the challenges. And the mark of a, a good leader is where you are wrong. You just said, oh, we didn't get it right. Let's do it again. Honestly speaking, he will endear himself so very much. I, I, I don't even see this uh, uh, protest holding. If necessary steps are being taken, and two, if it holds, even if government or hoodlums, God forbid, try to hijack it or do whatever evil, God forbid, the worst may happen because we are talking about protests. There's a difference between protest and revolution. Because now, it's citizen, an extent, citizen, you cannot put the point in time. You cannot put the point in time. You cannot put the statewide broadcast. Do you think some of the steps to be taken is to address the nation in a statewide broadcast? We've seen him invite to the villa, APC stalwarts and chieftains, traditional rulers, and also other demographics in terms of religious leaders to the state house. But do you think that the president needs to turn on the microphone and speak to Nigerians at this point? I thank Mr. President. It's just normal to meet with leaders. But I tell you something about leaders. I have dealt with a number of them. Some of them very highly ranked. Some of them with titles that you need to you call revert. But you discover that they are very, very anti-people. And most of these people you call leaders who have been looking for opportunity to get to a power and to share thoughts, when they go, they don't even talk about the people's problem. They don't even talk about the complaint people give to them. They try to show goodwill. They praising. You are doing very well. We have lost touch. Most leaders have lost touch. I have seen some of them. One of them almost, in fact, threatened me diabolically. And uh, unfortunately, I'm a spiritual person. And that's what Nigerians are. This, if you are fighting for your life, like Deligua said, that the man that is facing an assassin doesn't look at the mud on, on his shirt, not the tear on his trouser. So, trying to rely on certain persons who would have on their own been the ones to go to Mr. President to say, oh, this is how things are in our domain. They won't do it. Well, well, Most well, of those in government, they have me. Citizen Matthew, uh, uh, they, they are opinions of different people that have been sampled from you know, parts of the country. And uh, the top of which is the uh, political tendencies behind the protest as well as uh, pe other people who have shared their uh, opinions pe and said people who that there is uh, some sort of criminalization from the government towards what the protest is about and what the protesters want to do. Do you really think uh, that uh, criminalizing the protest is, uh, is the right thing to do at a point where the polity is heated, the people are angry, and uh, it, it seems like everybody is on their toes? It's, um, I'm happy that we have the president who, like uh, Sheo Sani said about two weeks ago at um, that fora where he spoke directly to Mr. President, he said, you are the grandfather of protests. Asiwaju has all the days of his life been a protester. He struggled through the Nadeko. He was almost killed. He, I think his house was born. He lost valuables. I went overseas, he was still doing the protest there. Why? Because the government, as was seen then, was grossly irresponsible. It takes an irresponsible government to demonize an obvious situation. So, those who are trying to demonize genuine agitations are the enemies of Mr. President. This administration is known as the administration of President Asiwaju Bola Metunumbu. Not any unknown person who has nothing to bring to the table. Like the one I quoted, one of the president's eight, he said they are mobilizing, and the people they are mobilizing is not security agencies. So. <laughs> they are, they are, they are, you're going to meet the kind of resistance that they will never believe in their lives. What does that mean? Is there in public domain? 
So, it is only an irresponsible uh, person or people in power, like it happened during Nadeko, where Asiwaju was, God saved, his, saved him. Some were not that lucky, they were killed. We were there. I was conscious. I was pro uh, June 12th. But what happened? Finally, over the years, the man that was demonized, even though for me, calling Democracy Day June 12th is not an honor to Abiola, is not. I am expecting a special dedication where whatever by name will be called MKO Abiola Day, not June 12th. June 12th was election day. So, only irresponsible people and anti-people in human beings, if one is not a human, he is less than a human, will see the kind of hunger, will see people committing suicide, will see people who are piercing new holes on their belts because they have lost weight, say they don't have right. It's a constitutional right to protest. It's possible of government to provide security. So, I don't have any regards for those who are talking anyhow. I respect Mr. President. I am making my inputs both as a group and as an individual. I am living the rest of my life for humanity. I am telling truth to power because I am patriotic. Those people demonizing people that are oppressed are the enemies of Nigeria and they should be ashamed of themselves. The same way some persons when I went on hunger strike. Some supposed responsible persons, they had a press conference and they tried to demonize me. And I was glad. Why? Because it was exposed for who they, who, who, who they were, who they are, and who they were ever remain to be until they change. When you come to that consciousness, you now know who to deal with. And for me, I have a philosophy. Where issues are involved, nobody is important because your life may depend on it. And now if a peaceful protest is not allowed, security, citizen, a revolution on national security will become this morning has also been a call by the Nigerian police for a registration by the organizers of the august 1st protest the police is urging the organizers to come forth and register so that enough security can be provided so far so good there's only one published letter here in the fct by a certain group that has taken ownership of a said protest now how do we replicate this call of having groups backing the protest to make their intention known to law enforcement to ensure that the protest is not hijacked. 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 Please. I'll take Please. my question again. The police is calling on organizers of the protest to come forward and register so that they take responsibility of providing security to avoid the protest from being hijacked. So far, so good. There's only been one letter by a said group in the FCT written to the FCT minister. Across the nation, it's supposed to be a nationwide protest. How do we have other groups who are said sponsors of this protest to also take ownership and sort of relate with the security agencies to provide security and prevent a hijacking of the protest? The hijacking of the protest. The hi uh, first, there is a lawyer by name Mini Bere Fiong. He's from Akwaibom State, and he is speaking for the organizers and the people have a bank account, at least maybe one of the organizers who are the major organizers, they have a bank account which is said to have been frozen. So you have people that can be identified. I think they call it take it back or whatever. Yes, now, some have written to the FCT minister that they want ego square. Nothing could have been better than that, that you can have people apply, that they want to use a particular venue, which will make other locations not to have been the approved venue so that security can really address things. Now, the statement by the minister of FCT, as in, you only saw it on social media, I want to see the outcome if that is true. If that is true, the organizers have not done well, they have to write officially, but it will be impossible to see that every segment who have to bring, come forward, come forward. Because in some states, they are not doing it. The governors are just telling the people, please, uh, don't do it. If you do it peacefully, 
they are not even firm. They, they, they don't even know what to say. Clearly. You cannot deny the fact that you don't spank a child and forbid him to cry. That would be witchcraft, see. So, if this, there are people that have a bank account, and that account has been frozen, you know them. If somebody has written to the FCT, you want this center, it's okay. Lagos is the economic capital of Nigeria. The biggest protest ever held in Nigeria was held in Lagos or Jota that lasted for years, where bands played, where eminent citizens were there, and governments did not hire hoodlums, and nobody had threatened them, you cannot protest in Lagos. But now people take pride to speak with arrogance, that go to your place and protest. No, we should make them to be ashamed. You don't have ideas on how to deal with the public. It, by accident, some of them have emerged where they are. And if they can talk down on people anyhow, oh, they are not helping us. It is to be able to deal with the people that you have seen. Because you will not be able to say, how many of you are coming? It's a people's thing. Personally, I spoke with some persons in public. I just asked, I hear people complain. I said, there's going to be a protest. Are you going to join? He said, if he does not join, what life is he living? He's dying. A transporter. A number of them. Not for violence. But just to say, we are hungry. Things are very hard. As soon as we start, the start payment of the minimum wage, Brian, I'm sure you know that school fees in public and private, so many private schools are going to be increased. Transmission is going to increase. Like I was against labor, I mean, hammering on minimum wage and palliative. I said, no, there are better approaches. Minimum wage, wage is forgiven. Every five years, you get negotiations. And I see Waju has done so well. He said, now nah, it's going to be every three years. That is also going to put pressure on government very soon. No. <laughs> but generally speaking, the hardship has not even started. The hardship is going to be more. And what's the way forward? I've said, governments take decisions on some very critical sectors that will be seen. And these looters who are parading themselves with their productivity while in government, weed them out. We can't have people in public office living affluence more than ever before. Meanwhile, majority of citizens have never been this poor. In the well, same country? Citizen, citizen no. You, 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 so mentioned, those who, you mentioned that um, there are some people who are genuinely joining the protest as a form of you know showing or relaying their grievances with the current situation of the country and of course there are also miscreants or deviants who would want to join for the sake of causing havoc and anarchy in the in the country uh, i would take take you back a little bit to comments by the Yobe state governor where he said that no, no account would any protest hold in his state while the um, Zamfara state governor, uh, the Jigao state governor, pardon me, said that uh, instead of protesting, the citizens should pray. And here in the FCT, the FCT minister said, denied uh, getting any letter from any group and said that even if any group is going to use the Eagle Square for their protest, they have to pay. Now, all of this is coming at a time when, when people are genuinely upset about the situation of the country. Don't you think there are better ways that uh, these governors or political leaders should have relayed their message to uh, the agitating uh, protesters other than how they have done? It's, 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 not, it's nothing new. Uh, you look back at NSAS. NSAS, what happened during NSAS? There was, as far back as 1984, uh, between 84, I think that was an NSAS, was mute, the idea was muted. In 1992, it was started to address uh, issues of kidnapping, armed robbery, special unit, and yes. they were to look special, they wear uniform and all of that, and impunity system. And it got to a point where in 19, uh, 2017, glamour, people started glamouring. Government reformed the SAS. It is killing youths. It, the brutality, I mean, it is insane. What happened? 
nothing was done until a young man was shot, I think in Delta State, and it was videoed, October 7, and that was what sparked off the NSAS, which I personally said, don't call it NSAS, Special Arm um, Robbery Squad, call it Special Arm, um, uh, as in, not as in police alone, but because in government, the looting had been too prevalent. We, nobody has a country that people will loot with impunity, without productivity, and you keep quiet if you're a normal human being. But the, 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 the youth focus on end, I mean, restructuring the uh, police force, that arm, and they had a five over five uh, demand, which were clearly to make things better and to also have no salary for them so that they will end these extortions and all of that. The five over five, they are there in public, people can uh, find that out. So, but what happened? Some states, particularly in the north, told their people, don't be part of NSAS uh, demonstration. When NSAS eventually happened and security were released, what happened at Lekki happened. Before it now became a problem where Aston set in, that was when the, the thing digressed from the peaceful situation where our youth were holding flags and just singing and staying there. Now, when this government of Buhari directed the setting up of um, NSAS panels, panels across the country. Brito, you remember that a number of northern states said they are not setting up a panel. They did not. And as we speak, the last time I checked, out of about 21 or so states that set up panels, only 16 submitted reports. And the reports have not been implemented. Some of them have not made it public, except Lagos State. So what are we looking at? We are looking at some persons who feel that um, to do this, to suppress people, shows how I support the presidency. The last time in NSAS was because people said they want to overthrow the government of our son, President Buhari. We must not support. Like some are saying now, that is a, a, a Southwest person is on the saddle. Southwest, please don't join us because we have to protect our son. Sickening, it shows how empty some persons who found their ways to public offices are. Well, they, well, they, you, they are not supposed Matthew to be there. Uh, time, yeah, so I'm afraid, is not our friend as we're coming to a full cycle on this conversation. But it's been a pleasure engaging you with your objectivity towards the Nigerian dream, away from the Nigerian factor mitigating the greatness of this country. We appreciate it.